I must confess that uh, that dream that I had that day has a many points turned into a nightmare. The only way we're going to get some of this oppression and exploitation away from us or aside from us is come together against a common enemy. <laughs> Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. You should ask yourself who taught you to hate being what God gave you. Good God. My people have been through some serious stuff, man. And stories like this always make me think, how can you not know anything about somebody and want to cause harm or dislike them because of the color of their skin? Seems pretty stupid to me. But, hey, let me warn y'all, this story is very, very disturbing, and we'll have those tempers flaring up a little bit. So, before we start, just know that this isn't to upset you, but spread a little awareness and to educate in hopes that this hate crime won't happen again. I am the mysterious Black Bandit. If y'all don't mind, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on so you don't miss out on any of these videos when I upload. And once you've done that... Let's get to this video. In the early morning of June 7, 1998, in the quiet East Texas town of Jasper, 49-year-old James Bird Jr. had left his parents' house to walk to his apartment after spending the day drinking and socializing with family. As he was walking down Huff Creek Road, a pickup truck with three white men inside drove up next to him and asked if he needed a ride to his apartment. Now, James somewhat knew one of the guys, which was Sean Barry, who was driving the truck, so he didn't think anything of it and agreed to let them take him to his apartment. While traveling down the road, James realized that they weren't going towards his apartment, but rather to a secluded area. Upon reaching their destination, the three men leaped out the car, dragged James from the rear cab, and started severely beating on him. James made every effort to defend himself, but being outnumbered by three younger men, he found himself overpowered, so there wasn't much he could do. While James was laying on the ground to show how much they hated a person of color, the three men began yelling and dating on him. Then while he laid there semi-conscious, one of them sprayed his face with black paint while calling him all types of nasty names. Now after this brutal beating, you would have thought that these cows would have just left, but they weren't done yet. So while James was laying there, they chained him by his ankle to their pickup truck and drug this man for freaking miles along a dirt road that turned into pavement. While James was trying to keep his head up from hitting the ground, he screamed and pleaded with the man to just let him go, but without any remorse, they continued to drag this man. For approximately a mile and a half, James was conscious throughout the whole ordeal, but as they continued to drag him, he bounced into a ditch, hitting a rigid edge of a concrete culvert, which was a drainage ditch, just below his right arm. The impact covered his arm, shoulder, neck, and head from the rest of his body. For almost another mile, these men continued to drag his mutilated body until they reached a segregated black cemetery. Then all the men got out the truck, picked up James, head his torso and dumped it into the cemetery then went to a barbecue as if nothing happened the following morning someone driving down the road spotted what looked like human parts in a ditch so they reported to the police once the investigators arrived to the scene they found a wrench with the name barry imprinted on it and also a lighter that was inscribed with the word possum which was john king's nickname he earned in prison now john king and lawrence brewer were well-known white supremacists around the area john's White pride ran so deep that he had several racist tattoos across his body. One was with a black man hanging from a tree, then another was with the Nazi symbol with the word Alvin Pride or whatever it is, and one with a patch for a gang of white service inmates known as the Confederate Knights of America. Now, due to the extreme circumstances, the state law enforcement officials stated that this murder was considered a hate crime, so they contacted the FBI to assist in this horrible crime. Once the FBI took over, it took less than 24 hours for them to gather all the evidence and to discover all of James' remains. It was reported that they found over 80 different places that included portions of James' 
remains. Now, it wasn't long before they made their arrest. Sean Allen Berry, Lawrence Russell Brewer, and John William King were all arrested and put in prison until their trial. During their time in prison, Lawrence claimed that James' throat had been slashed by Sean before they drug him. However, when an autopsy was performed, it told a totally different story. The forensic evidence suggested that James had been attempting to keep his head up during the drug. And while almost all of his reels were fractured, his brain and skull were fully intact, further suggesting that he maintained consciousness throughout the whole torturing. Now, while they awaited trial, a letter was intercepted by jail officials from John King to Lawrence Brewer. John expressed his pride and enjoyment in the crime and said that he realized while committing this murder, he might have to die, but regardless of the outcome, we have made history, then ended it by saying, death before honor. As a result to this brutal hate crime, all three men were tried and convicted of the murder of James Byrd Jr. During the trial of 23-year-old Sean Allen Barry, the prosecution concluded that he wasn't a white supremacist, but they argued that he was just as responsible for James' murder as the other two men and suggested that he might have been in it just for the thrill kill. His attorney had three black men come to the stand to testify on his behalf that he wasn't a racist. Sean claimed that Lawrence and John were almost entirely responsible for the murder. He continued to state it while they were beating on James. He tried to stop them, but Lawrence threatened to do the same to him if he didn't back off. At the end of the trial, Sean's life was spared from execution and he was sentenced to life in prison. Now amongst the three, Sean was the only one to show some degree of remorse. 23-year-old John William King was one of Sean's longtime friends. He was accused of beating James with a bat and then dragged him behind the pickup truck until he died. Now, John was locked up prior to the murder, but allegedly he was released early from the Texas prison because he said he had been repeatedly beaten and ganged by the black inmates. At the end of his trial, the jury found him guilty of first-degree murder and kidnapping, and he was sentenced to death for his role in James' murder. Now, 31-year-old Lawrence Russell Brewer was possibly the one that coordinated the whole killing. He was indeed a proud white supremacist who, prior to James' murder, had served in prison for drug possession and burglary. When he was paroled out in 1991, he violated those conditions and had to return to prison. According to his testimony, the only reason he joined the white supremacist gang in prison, which was the area nation was to keep him safe from the other inmates. This is also when him and John became very close friends. During his trial, the prosecution labeled him as a racist sociopath that didn't show any repentance for what him and his friends had did to James. As a result for his action in the crime, he was ultimately convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to death by lethal injection. On December 21st, 2018, John King's execution by lethal injection was scheduled for April 24th, 2019. Now, two days before his execution, he filed an appeal to both the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals and the Texas Board of Pardon and Parole, but both were denied. Even James' son, Ross Bird, who opposed capital punishment, campaigned to spare the lives of those who murdered his father. But what they did to this man was unacceptable, and to me, they deserve whatever they had coming to them. So, on April 24th, 2019, John William King was executed at the Huntsville unit by lethal injection. Now, like I said before, that Lawrence guy was definitely the worst kind of person. Now, while he was on death roll in his unit, you know how they offer you that last meal on the day of your execution? Well, this man ordered so much stuff from meat lover pizzas to ice cream, but check this out. When the food came, he tells the correctional officer he didn't want it anymore. And this caused the state Senate to end the 87-year-old tradition of giving the last meal to inmates. Now, on September 21st, 2011, Lawrence was set to be executed by lethal injection. From his final walk to that table, he still didn't show any remorse. Then, the last thing he said was, as far as any regrets, no, I have no regrets. No, I do it all over again to tell you the truth. As for Sean Barry, from the time he was locked up to the year 2020, he had been living in protective custody at the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, and he will be eligible for parole when he is 63 years old in June of 2038. 
James Byrd Jr. was born on May 2nd, 1949 in Jasper County, Texas. He was the third of nine children to Stella May Sharp and his father, James Byrd Sr. His mother was a Sunday school teacher and his father was a deacon at the Greater New Bethel Church. James graduated from Jasper Row High School in 1967, which was the last segregated class. And after graduating, instead of following his sister's footsteps and going to college, he started working as a vacuum salesman and got married and had three children. The friends of James stated he was always singing and doing impressions. As they laughed, they continued and stated, James always said he was going to make history. Stories like this always kind of piss me off because for y'all to volunteer and offer this man a ride, then do him like that is just freaking sick. I know a lot of people want us to let the past stay in the past, but... The past holds a crucial lesson for what we experience today, and more importantly, it will help prevent repetition of these historical injustices. Although this happened in 1998, I want to send the family of James Byrd Jr. my sincere condolences, and I hope your hearts have healed by now. That will bring this video to an end. Let me thank every single one of you for your love and support. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. I hope you all had a wonderful, wonderful day. And until next time, stay mysterious, my friends.